Hello, my name is Noelle Burgess. I am a Master of Arts candidate in Medical and Biological Illustration at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. This is my presentation on my master's thesis project. The thesis project was creating a game-based learning tool for optimizing intra-hospital disaster response. A mass casualty incident, or MCI, is classified as any traumatic event in which medical resources are overwhelmed by the number and severity of casualties. MCI can be of both natural and man-made origin and are of increasing concern to the medical sector. Examples of such MCI events include natural disasters, terrorism, mass transportation accidents, and one we are too familiar with at the moment, pandemics. MCI causes a sudden surge or influx of patients interacting with the medical system. This surge presents a logistical challenge that requires rapid adaptation and coordination between many different medical disciplines. In such events, resources are strained in three major categories, space, staff, and medical supplies. MCI emergency plans are already in place in the majority of the United States hospital system. However, gaps in knowledge have been identified amongst intra-hospital staff. MCI presents an extreme logistical challenge. This challenge requires that all intra-hospital personnel fully understand their responsibilities in such an event in order to prioritize patient care and manage finite quantities of space, staff, and supplies to save lives. This means training for intra-hospital employees is a necessity. Current training methods include a combination of digital training modules and large hospital-wide simulations. Both training methods have their merits. However, each has shortcomings as well, particularly in areas of learner engagement, cost, and repeatability. As a remedy to these shortcomings, the use of a game as a training delivery device was proposed. Game-based learning has a few distinct advantages. It increases learner engagement, provides a space for in-person team-based decision-making, and a safe simulated environment through which to learn and practice material. During concept generation of our MCI learning game, we determined a need for three major outcomes the learning of pertinent medical information and hospital management protocol, as well as practicing or application of these concepts through teamwork and complex decision-making. And it would need to do all this in such a way that was accessible to a multidisciplinary suite of intra-hospital personnel. Due to the novel nature of applying game-based learning to hospital disaster protocol, we chose to use what is referred to as the spiral model of iterative design. Essentially, this means that we went through several repetitive prototyping cycles in which we plan, design or prototype, test, identify problems, and then reevaluate before cycling through the process again. Over the course of development, we generated a rule set, facilitator script, audio files to aid in the creation of an immersive environment, and of course the physical board game elements. Key considerations in the creation of the storyline and visuals included. How do we get the game participant to feel invested in the role they are playing? How do we get participants to work as a team to make decisions about how to manage space, staff, and medical supplies? How do we represent the passage of time and the subsequent stress on the individual, team, and hospital? To create an immersive environment in this first version of the game, we chose to make our simulated mass casualty incident a mass shooting at a food truck rally in a nearby park. On the whole, we completed one prototype where we ironed out game introduction and core elements, a second prototype where we tested the first round of the game and introduced the concept of triage. A third prototype where we introduced all planned game elements and their corresponding visuals. And a fourth prototype where we continued to refine game visuals and confirmed participant ability to progress through all six rounds of gameplay. During these preliminary prototyping cycles, we used my classmates as a user testing group. 
Thanks, guys. Our final round of testing was done with individuals from our target audience. After each round of prototyping and user testing, product refinements were made, spurring us toward our final product. Here is the result of all this cumulative effort. When creating the visual elements, attention was paid to the color story to ensure that the game looked engaging and fun, without seeming inappropriate in light of the game's content. A dusty blue was chosen to represent normal hospital operations. In contrast, yellow correlated with the hospital critical event codes. ED code yellow and hospital code yellow correspond with patient influx events. Finally, a vibrant orange was chosen to represent player actions. Illustrations were created to support the simulation storyline, add visual interest, and help players quickly identify key game elements. Care was taken to emulate MCI strain on resources as well. The rooms in the game board represent MCI strain on available space. Staff fatigue was represented through the finite supply of player action cards. These cards also represented player moves and varied by job description. Strain on availability of medical supplies was represented through the limited quantity of supply cards. 60 patient triage cards were developed and their entry into gameplay was staged by round. This staging of arriving casualties helped to progress the game and emulated the order of casualty arrivals in a real event. With the less injured or ambulatory individuals arriving in the first 30 minutes, to be followed in later rounds by those requiring more urgent care, with a simulated arrival time of 60 to 90 minutes. Finally, in order to increase consistency between the delivery and facilitation of separate training events, a digital facilitator was conceived. A flowchart for this element was created with the intent of developing it in the future. Next steps include completion of the digital facilitator, investigation into the game's effect on staff MCI performance, the publication and distribution of the game to hospitals around the U.S., and the creation of additional scenarios, particularly for natural disaster, chemical spill, and epidemic. I learned a few important lessons about the gamification of instruction. For effective delivery, it is important to divide content into separate events that proceed in this order. Learn, practice, implement. It is important to do everything you can to reduce cognitive load. If you have too many tasks and or too many visual elements, you are going to overwhelm your learner and they won't be able to process the information you are trying to get them to understand. Finally, User testing is essential. Listening to the user will help you refine information, refine the amount and delivery of game elements, and refine gameplay itself to achieve the optimal experience. Finally, we are still looking for funding. We're writing grant applications to fund further development and looking to generate partnerships in order to register the product and license it. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who contributed to this project and supported me through my thesis research. And of course, thank you to my classmates for providing frequent, priceless feedback throughout the creation of this project. And thank you for watching.